What's going on, everybody? Hey, listen, I am Andrew, and also run this channel with my wife, Janelle, where we talk everything kingdom living. And uh, before we get started in today's topic, I want to encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to our channel and uh, go ahead and like this video um, so you can uh, be, be, uh, be notified when we have more videos such as these, right? So let's get into today's topic. So today's topic, we're going to be talking about dealing with the seasons of temptation. Right. Uh, you know, when we go through life, right, when you build a structure, when you build a house, right, when you when your house is being built, right, there's a foundation that has to be laid first. Right. And then you build the walls and then you build the interior and then, you know, you build, you put the furniture, you put all these different things in there. But at some point, every foundation has to go through a level of testing. Right. You have to test the foundation. You have to test it so it can carry the weight so it can so it can handle the pressure so that it also will expose what is it really made of. And likewise, temptation is something that as believers in Christ, we often always find ourselves facing. Right. So temptation is simply being tested. Right. It means that something is testing what is there. Right. And so temptation often can sound like a bad thing or a negative thing, but really temptation is a moment of exposure. It exposes what something really carries, right? If you've been training for a sport, right? You've been doing all the practices, you've been um, doing all the training, you have done the muscle work, you've done the mental work, you know, you have been disciplined in your eating and you're working out and all this stuff. And then you find yourself having to go to a tryout for a team, right? Oftentimes that's a, a, a moment of temptation, right? There's a pressure that comes with it, but it brings you, it, 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 it comes to test and uh, expose of what you really carry. Are you able to really go to the next level in your skill, right? If you think about an example of, if you make a shoe, right? A manufacturer that makes a shoe, think about Nike or many other manufacturers, right? As they make shoes, before they make it public, they have to get somebody to put their foot in it, walk around in it, run in it, do certain things in it so they can test it to see if it's durable through the pressure, right? Like an NBA player does a lot of moving and turning and flipping. And if you just make a shoe out of nowhere and you just give it to a player and you don't know if it's tested, it could break their ankle, right? It could destroy their whole career. And likewise, temptation happens, right, in our lives, right? So we will look at Jesus in Mar Matthew 4. We see that um, the Bible says that after um, Jesus was affirmed by the Father, the Bible says that John baptized Jesus, right? And after baptizing him, the Bible says the voice a voice appeared and said, you know, um, um, you know, called out Jesus and said, my son, who I'm well pleased of, right? He affirmed him, right? After being baptized and after he affirmed him, the Bible says he goes straight. The Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness um, for 40 days and 40 nights to be tempted by the devil, right? And the Bible says Jesus became hungry. And at the moment he became hungry, it says that the tempter, uh, which is Satan that came and said, why don't you just turn these stones into bread? And one thing Jesus said was, you know, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I want to stop right there really quick because one of the tactics or one of the strategies of overcoming temptation is we have to know what God is what what God has said and what He is saying, right? What has God said in His Word, right? Because the Bible says that His Word will not return void, but will accomplish everything He's sending out to do. The Bible even says in Psalms that the angels hearken to the voice of God's Word. As a matter of fact, another place says that God magnifies His Word above His own name. So, in other words, God takes very uh, He's very strategic when it concerns His Word, right? And also we understand too, according to John 1, 14, that Jesus is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. And so there's so much power and authority in the word of God. And so but oftentimes we have the written word, you know, we have the word that is written. We have the scriptures we read. And then we also have what, what is God saying through his word. And oftentimes that's where Holy Spirit comes in, where Holy Spirit will begin to uh, speak the word speak a word to us based upon what is already written in the word, right? 
And, um, you know, it's likewise, for an example, if you're going through a trial, James uh, 1 says, consider it joy when you fall into trials of many kind, knowing the triangle of your faith works patience. Let patience have a perfect work. So you're perfect and tired, lacking nothing, right? And so um, likewise, you, you, you may not have thought about that scripture today, but because you're in a moment, Holy Spirit will bring that back to remembrance and he will speak that word to you because that fits your situation, if that makes sense. So likewise, Jesus was telling, was speaking and dealing with the tempter, the devil, um, as he was coming to tempt him to um, do something that Jesus had in his mind that we live by the word, right? And after this moment, he begins, the, um, Satan begins to tempt him even more. And as he begins to tempt him, one of the things he would always say was, it is written, right? It is written, right? You should serve the Lord your God in him only, right? You should not tempt the Lord your God, right? He began to write, he began to speak what is written. And so one of the ways we overcome temptation is we have to remember temptation is a, is a, is a, is, is a temporary moment we're in a lot of times. It's a, it's a moment that we're dealing with something. Sometimes the temptation could be, um, it could be lustful. Sometimes you, maybe God brought you out of a promiscuous lifestyle. Maybe you are, you know, you live uh, a very sexual lifestyle before Christ and you go through and God builds you up. He builds your faith up. You really see who you are. You see he loves you. You know who you are and all these different things. And then you find yourself in a season where all these other things that you at one time were bound by, they come back up again and you got to deal with them. And right. And then your flesh starts to perk up. Memories try to come back. And in that moment, we have to respond with the word. The Bible tells us in First uh, Corinthians 10. That when temptation, temptation is common to every man, right? Well, all everybody uh, is subject to temptation, right? And temptation comes to test was there, but it says that God will make a way of escape that you must, but you must bear it, right? So when temptation comes, understand there is a way of escape that God will put in place for you to come through that temptation to overcome, but you have to look for the way of escape, right? We see this where, uh, with Joseph, um, in uh, Genesis, you know, when he was in a position where, um, you know, Potiphar's wife was trying to get him to sleep with her. And the, the Bible says that she grabbed his clothes and, uh, you know, was trying to get him to sleep with her so she could frame him. Right. And, you know, to really take away his, his authority and stuff that he had, his reputation. And Joseph, the Bible says Joseph fleed. He just ran. But when he ran, he was naked. Right. And then she had his clothes in her hand. And so it looked it like he actually did uh, the act, but he didn't. He actually fled away and she still tried to frame him. He still went through all this different stuff. But the reality is he did the right thing. Right. And it is it, shown because even when he had went in prison, the Lord was still with him. God was still using him, even though they put him in a prison. And so here's the thing. Temptation, you know, the test of life. You know, other people may th not think you have passed your test. Other people may try to accuse you and say, you're, you're still this and you're still that and all this stuff. At the end of the day, even if they put you in prison, even if you're in a, in a situation where people don't understand you, the reality is God will be with you and God knows um, the secret things that you have overcome, right? And so we, we, I love the fact that Jesus was a man of the word, right? In other words, temptation, when we deal with temptation, we have to make sure that we are aligning ourselves with the word of God, right? Because our flesh is very, uh, is very emotional. It, it's, you know, our emotions flow up and down. One day we, we want to, um, you know, one day we want to go to the, um, to, to on vacation. The next time, next day we want to go to the mountains. The next day we want a sandwich. The next day we want a smoothie, you know, kind of thing. And so we have to make sure we're not governed by emotions, especially during temptation. And understanding that God has a way of escape for you. So whatever your temptation, maybe you came off of drugs. The next thing you know, drugs is showing back up at your door. Somebody's come and tell you to smoke this, drink this, come over here, do all this different stuff. The reality is when you stand on the word of God, right, then God will see you through, right? And so use the word of God. The, don't allow yourself to just go through um, temptation without going to what God's word has already said, right? The Bible says this, Jesus um, a high priest that was tempted like we were, right? With He understands every temptation. He was tempted with every temptation of, of drinking, of smoking, 
of same-sex attractions, uh, you know, homosexuality, promiscuous lifestyles, you know, uh, you know, uh, prostitution, different things, whatever the case may be, Jesus was tempted in all forms for us so that through Christ we can overcome. Now the Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So I want to encourage you, stand on God's word. Like temptation is coming. It's going to come. If the test is going to come because the test isn't for your demise, but it's going to test what you really carry. Um, I believe it's in Proverbs or Psalms, but it says, you know, uh, if you fail in the day of testing, um, you know, when you're test in the day of testing, uh, if you fail, it reveals your strength. Right. So temptation comes to test what you really can carry. And, and here's the thing. If, if, if when you're tested and you realize you don't have the strength that you thought you had, that you didn't have the depth in God that you thought you had, maybe you thought you had a deeper prayer life. You thought you knew God's voice more. And next thing you know, you find yourself in a temptation. You fall. I want to encourage you to get back up. I want, the Bible says a, a just man, uh, you know, a just man gets back up seven, 70 times. You got to get back up. You got to find yourself um, and, and dust, dust the condemnation off. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But at the end of the day, we have to learn from the mistake. If you, if you fall, understand, see that weakness as a place where God wants to strengthen you. He wants to gird you up. The Bible says his grace is sufficient when we're weak. So sometimes, God, you may find yourself falling into something. You may find yourself weak. That means you need accountability. We all need accountability. You need a community that you can get around. You need some brothers. You need some sisters that can pray for you, that can encourage you, that can hold your hand and say, listen, we're going to get through this, right? Going to build you up. I'm not saying those that are, you know, know you're going through and they want to keep, encourage you to stay down that path. You got to know how to exit those relationships, right? If we're going to conquer temptation. But the reality is I want to encourage you. Temptation isn't to despise, the, demise you. It's to test. It's to, it's to really show you what you really got. <laughs> you know, it really shows us, man, I really believe God. There's some things that, um, you know, that's one way we know that we're maturing and growing is that maybe one se the last season before you fell for a certain temptation, right? You can have a temptation with money, maybe just spending money, buying things, and, you know, just feeling like that's a way you want to gratify yourself is you just spend money, spend money, spend the money. And then you find yourself in a season where God blesses you with a good amount of money and you have to, te the temptation is just go ahead and spin it up. Or the wisdom would be, let me save. Let me hold it so I know what to do, right? Let me pray. Let me go get counsel on this before I spend this money, right? That's how we mature and grow. But temptation is to, to test what has God put on the inside of you? What lessons, what things has he been teaching you? You know, oftentimes the words and the and teaching and the, um, the discipleship that we go through, this is important that we connect to a local body of believers, that we connect to a church. We connect where we can grow, where we can grow in our relationships, growing our faith. Um, learn who we are, right? Learn the authority that we have in Christ so that we are able to practice it in our day-to-day -day life. And so anyway, that's it for today. I pray this blessed you. You know, um, once again, I want to encourage you, go ahead and like this video. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel so you can be notified when we do more videos like this. Everything talking, everything, we talk everything kingdom living. So until next time, God bless you and uh, stay blessed by the best. Later.